So we are going to jump right in, and um, with the first pick, uh, I'm having Liberty select, um, yeah, Sabrina Unescu. I mean, this one isn't really debatable. I mean, I don't think this is the easiest number one pick in the entire draft um, history, but it's pretty easy. I mean, I don't see them choosing any other player. I think every other person that has a mo- has made a mock draft um has her as the number one pick um this is by far the easiest pick in the draft um i mean she's arguably the best college basketball player ever um and how lucky are the liberty to have this first pick i mean i mean can't imagine what it must feel like to be a liberty fan right now um Lucky is a strong, is a good word for for the New York Liberty right now, being that they weren't even the worst team in the league last year. But, yeah, they don't really have too much point guards on the team. I think Brittany Boyd is their main one right now, and she'll fit perfectly. I mean, I, I personally would rather see her go to a team that has, you know, more of a bigger fan base, you know, but it is what it is obviously super sad for her um not getting to play in the tournament this year and the whole Oregon team and everybody obviously but I'm really excited to see um what she'll do in the WNBA with the second pick in the draft um the Dallas Wings they have four first round picks which is crazy to me I'm sure they'll trade some but I have them taking um Lauren Cox I mean I had Sobley here for a while and a lot of people do I mean most people every everyone I've seen um has Sabali here but looking at the Wings' roster they really don't have any good post players I mean their best post player is arguably um Izzy Harrison or Endor Astu Endor and that to me just isn't good enough you know and they have like eight wing players like it's crazy if they were to draft Sobley like they have so many guard and wing players to me I think this is just obvious for them to draft her and I mean she's just she's obviously a great player so if I'm the wings I'm taking her because their guard their guard play their guards is very good but their posts when you're looking at the roster are just kind of like eh but again you know what those four four picks uh it's hard to know what exactly they'll do but if I'm the wings, I am taking Cox here. With the third pick, we have the Indiana Fever. And this one is pretty easy, too. Um, with Cox going, I have them getting uh, drafting Sobley. It's vice versa, you know, if Sobley goes second, Cox is getting drafted here. Um, I think they're just too good of players to pass up. Uh, I kind of thought about maybe... Carter Kennedy Carter going here but I just yeah I wouldn't be able to pass up Sobley if I was a fever and if Sobley goes second and Cox is here uh, that's perfectly fine too you know I would just by drafting Cox second uh, Sobley is getting drafted third here and she's gonna make a great player obviously she showed it against Team USA she's very versatile tall she's 6'4 and she's not a post player like that's gonna help any team um she's just a great all-around player and you know if Cox ends up here that'll be great too you know they did just get a center last last year and McCowan but that'll be a good one two punch I think Cox is way better than McCowan but yeah this pick is either way Um, If Carter does get drafted here, I will be not totally surprised, but I will be a little surprised. It'd be weird if Sobley did end up falling um, to the fourth pick, or even lower. Obviously, it'd be pretty surprising, but I doubt that'll happen. So yeah, set two to the fever. Now on to the fourth pick, that Atlanta Dream um, have the fourth, and they made this really easy. Because I feel like they've hinted at getting Kennedy Carter. Um, the Dream last year wore last in three-point shooting, three-point percentage. So them taking a post here is just 
almost guaranteed. Uh, Megan Walker could drop here. Otherwise, I'm if uh, the picks have gone, Sabrina, Cox, Sobley, those three gone. Uh, I think they're gonna take Carter here. Um, she's a junior, uh, entered early. She's had three really good seasons at Texas A and M. Not too much of a fan of her. I don't know why. I love watching her play. She's got a really swaggy game. A lot of moves. You know, she's just a really good one-on-one player. She's 5'7". She's pretty small, but she really gets it done and scores a lot. And that's something the Fever need. And she's a good shooter. So that'll help them a lot. And I really, really am confident that um, the Dream are going to draft her with the fourth. I'm really interested to see how her game translates to the WNBA because she really did whatever she wanted in college at A&M. And it's really interesting to see how really, really good scores like her um, end up playing in the WNBA. So that'll be interesting. Moving on, we have uh, with the fifth pick, uh, the Dallas Wings. Uh, I have um, them selecting Ty Harris here. To me, drafting Cox second wouldn't really make sense to draft a player like Hebert, who I had up this high, to draft back-to-back centers. I feel like wouldn't be um, the move. Could be. But I just have them going for a guard here. And I just have Ty Harris. Them taking Ty Harris over Dangerfield and the other guards. Energy. She's not coaching her culture. She's coaching basketball players and they can play. On to the sixth pick, we have my Minnesota Lynx. Uh, with Harris taking fifth. Yes, indeed, we are drafting Megan Walker. Um, with Harris taken, this one is a, a no-brainer for me. Even with Harris on the board still, I still want to take Walker. I'm still taking Walker. Um, yeah, I know, I know, we need a point guard. Uh, but I have a good idea in drafting one second round. Um, I don't want to pass up a player like Walker. Uh, she's one of my favorite players. Uh, she's got really good height for a guard. And she won't be asked to play multiple positions in the WNBA. You know, she'll strictly be a guard. And I just, I can't pass up a score like her. I really think she will do good things in the WNBA. I'm really hoping she doesn't get drafted one through five. So we can take her here. We had success drafting a UConn player last year. Um, Why not do it again? With the seventh pick, I have the Wings taking Bella Lare. Um, player that I've heard really good things about, about how well her game will translate to the WNBA. Um, not a lot of people have seen her play. Um, so, yeah, I think with all the picks they have in the first round, they're going to be the team to take the shot at her. Moving on to the eighth pick. Um, we got the Chicago Sky. Uh, it gets harder as we move on in the first round, but I have them selecting Crystal Dangerfield. Uh, I could see her falling to the second round. Um, I could see her also bumping up a couple of spots, but I feel like for the Sky, um, drafting her would be pretty smart. Uh, she's a good point guard. She passes, shoots, and defends well. Um, the concern is obviously she's only 5'5", but I feel like she'd make a great backup for Vandersloot and would learn from Sloot really well. Um, Wade drafted Katie Lou last year, UConn player. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did it again this year. Uh, the Dallas Wings have the ninth pick. And again, it's really tough. But I actually have them taking Kaya Gillespie here. Uh, this one I was really um, questioning myself about. But she's a tough player. Um, she led Florida State in scoring and rebounding. Um, she's only 6'2", f- so for a post, I mean, it's not terrible. She's got a really good body build. So I feel like that factor um, in the WNBA won't bother her. And the Wings have all these picks. Uh, I don't know, it's a hard choice because there's so many players still on the board with the same skills. But height won't be a problem for her. And I can see her game translating very well because of that. Um, I feel like not a lot of people know about her. Uh, she she was she started her career at Maryland and then transferred to uh, Florida State. 
and she can shoot the three ball and drafting her uh, a little higher than what most people have her I don't think it's going to end up being a problem moving on we are on the 10th pick uh, the Phoenix Mercury have, with the 10th pick uh, I have them taking uh, Ruthie Hebert and again I could see I don't see her really falling any further than this except maybe another pick but I could very well seen her get drafted way earlier than this uh, I'm a big fan of her game um, if she's still available here, uh, it's, she's going to be hard to pass up. Uh, Mont Premier, Beatrice Mont Premier could also be a choice here, but Ruthie's just such a solid post player. She had an amazing career at Oregon. She's the most efficient player in the draft, uh, and maybe she can expand her game. Um, she'll get even better. She shot 65% from the field throughout her entire college career, which is crazy, and 68% this year, her senior season. I think she'll be a, a good backup, especially for Brittany Griner. It is really just going to be interesting to see where she does end up in the first round. We are now at the 11th pick, uh, in which the Seattle Storm have. And here I have them drafting Beatrice Mont Premier. And I could see her going to pick or two before this. Um, but it's a tough choice. But she she's just so good and so athletic. She averaged almost a double-double in her 17 games. Played this season at Miami before it got cut short. Uh, she got injured halfway through. So she'll also be interesting to see where she ends up because she only played half this year. But she'll be uh, great off the bench for Stewart and Howard. And the Storm could use a couple more post players. But she's just so athletic and fast. And she does a lot of things well. I feel like she'll make a, a team very happy. If she's still available, I see the Storm taking her here. We are now on to the final pick of the first round with the 12th pick. I have the Washington Mystics selecting Kyla Charles and... This is my sleeper pick. Um, I love her as a player. I love her game. Um, Coach Mike has drafted some shockers these past two years. Ariel Atkins and Kiara Leslie both kind of like really out of the blue. Um, Charles is my sleeper in, in this draft. Her scoring went down this senior year, but she's so tough. Uh, her game reminds me a lot like Gabby Williams. She's crazy fast and athletic, plays really good defense and it's something the defending champions and the mystics i don't think are gonna pass up if he drafts more of a score uh, considering to tolliver has gone back to the sparks i won't be surprised either with these next four players uh still being available i can only imagine they'll go right away in the second round kiki herbert harrigan she had a great year this year at south carolina could definitely see her going first round. Great post player. Dave Cooper, uh, one of my favorite players in this draft. Definitely could see her going first round as well. If Walker gets selected before we have our sixth pick. Um, we'll, we'll draft a point guard, Ty Harris or Dangerfield probably. And if so, I don't want any of them. I want Cooper. I would love to take her with the sixth pick if um, Walker is already taken. And Kathleen Doyle, my other sleeper pick, um, I'd imagine she'll, she'll still be available with our 16th pick. And if so, I really hope we take her point guard. Uh, she is a great player. Scoring isn't really her thing. Uh, she can, though. But she's built like a rock. And I just feel like under Coach Reeve, I feel like she'll end up becoming a great ball player and fill that point guard spot that we need. Um, I would love to take her here, but we'll see. I'm hoping. That wraps it up. The draft is this Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Hope you tune in. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This took a lot of time. And again, thank you.